learn the songs, crush the audition, get the gig. It's time to go pro, Metal Base Monday. So, quick channel updates. Uh, Going to be some expansions coming up. A lot of the stuff that I've been telling you guys is coming up is in about the next six weeks. Uh, big content expansion and what's coming up. Again, as I mentioned last time, uh, Metal Base Microscope is coming back and I'm going to have it spread across a few, a few platforms and ways of getting around some of the uh, copyright stuff. But the first of those is going to come up with a special surprise that my patrons already know about. So that's going to be coming up here soon. And the production and songwriting series, that'll be kicking off here uh, right about the same time. And a few other surprises uh, and a couple of the lessons that I've been promising and stuff. I've decided to structure a little differently, and those are all going to come out right around the same time. So much content coming up and stuff for my patrons is getting uh, stepped up now, too, along with some live streams. But to thank you kind and generous uh, supporters of the channel, MacAthu, Kevin Tool, Icky, Ryan Huggard, Marcus Orth, Power Surge 5000, the man still only known as Chris, Stephen Becker, TJ Meacham, Stu Bennett, Rat Bones, D-Rock, Bottom, Rel Bottom Dweller 5, Rob T, and I hope I get this right, Carol Zemasinski. If I didn't get that right, please message me and make sure I be uh, I can pronounce your name right. I don't want to skip that up because I appreciate the support. Thank you to all of you. Uh, some cool stuff coming up. In fact, uh, this week, something new about the lesson training and practice methods went up and a new challenge. So be sure to check out on the Patreon pages for that video, and I'm going to follow up with a live stream here soon to talk more about it. But matching on that topic, I'm going to cover in two parts this week some things that I continually get questions about and I've had a lot of problems with as far as bands I've been in and things, and just kind of get with you about what the expectations are, how to nail an audition, how to get into a good band, and how to make sure you're doing this stuff competently. Because unfortunately, I think our standards for what should go into showing ourselves and showing what we're capable of and doing an audition have gotten a little low. So some experiences from myself and from other major players and things I'm going to share with you. And here's my recommendations for what process you should be going through to really nail an audition. The first one is, and it would seem like it's obvious, but apparently it's not, is be really prepared. Really know the music. Uh, my band Voice of Descent, one of the major reasons why I wound up retiring it as a live act and just turning into a recording project, is the, the audition process was so soul-destroying that I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Uh, we went through a few guitar players, and we had some great players, but for one reason or another, one would have to leave. I live in Los Angeles right now, and you would think, you know, as many people do, well, there's guitar players everywhere. When we would lose a guitar player, no joke, multiple times it would take a year for us to find another one. I'm not playing Stravinsky covers here. It would take a year to find someone who could A, just show up, B, be competent enough to know the songs, be able to speak actually absolutely dedicate themselves to just learning the material the competency level was about as shallow as an above ground kiddie pool it was it, like i said just soul destroying to the point where i just didn't want to do it anymore and i find this kills a lot more bands than people realize so if you want to do this understand that you know there is an expectation of you and the other thing is man just Hold a high standard for yourself, whether it's practice or it's an audition or it's just even you're playing at home. You're always going to reap rewards from it. So if you're not going to do it and just crush it, don't bother. You're wasting your time and you're wasting everybody else's. Demand more of yourself. I guarantee you the joy is worth it. So when I say being prepared, don't just show up thinking that you can kind of get through a song. Don't. You know, I kind of know the arrangements, maybe this here. I'm not sure what this riff is, that kind of thing. 
Know the song like you were born playing it. Practice it relentlessly. Know it before you go in. As a person who's auditioned a ton of different players, I would much rather a person go, hey man, I feel like I need an extra week on this, but I want to come in and kill it for you guys. Give me a little bit more time and I'm going to do this. I would love to hear that, that somebody was striving for a high standard and to really crush it than to have some guy come in and what all that tells me is he doesn't care enough. When times get tough for, you know, shows on the road or bad things happen, I don't want that guy in my band. I don't want somebody who just doesn't give a crap because he's also the person that's likely to bail the second things get inconvenient or he's not having the best time of his life. So show who you are and what you're made of up front. Go over the songs, get everything down, and here's one thing I've done for every single audition I've ever gone to, and it's been noticed by every person I've ever auditioned for. Learn more than you were asked. If the band has six songs and they ask you to learn three, learn six. No joke. If you walk in there and you can play everything they have on their EP, it, I'm telling you, you almost have the gig at that point because you've shown that you have interest, you have desire, that you have a work ethic, and that you're willing to put out and show before you get something back. Most people anymore just kind of, you know, what are you going to do for me attitude. And, you know, who wants to do that with somebody? If you go into an audition, and I've seen the look on people's face. We get through, you know, three songs or something. They're like, oh, that was cool. You want to do those songs again? Or, you know, they want to jam a little more because they're interested. I'll go, why don't we do this song? I go, you know that one? Yeah. They're blown away that I learned something that they didn't give to me. I'm telling you, do something like that, and that will almost every time put you in the top tier of who's going to get picked. Now, on a side on this one, uh, a story about that's exactly what happened with Jason Newstead auditioning for Metallica. He wanted that gig so bad, he learned almost Metallica's entire catalog when he went there. He practiced relentlessly, over and over, spent days and fell asleep with his bass in his hands, just working on that gig. Then when he found out he wasn't really going to get warm-up time and that you just had to wait your turn to go in, he went in and apparently snuck in and hid behind cabinets and listened to all the other auditions before him to find out what people were missing, what the vibe was, you know, what he was up against, and started formulating a plan of how he was going to deal with these things when he got his turn. That's smart. That's shrewd. That's working for what you want. It seems to have got him a gig, a pretty good one, that lasted a long time, regardless of what we think of injustice for all. Uh, so that kind of fire and that motivation is what's going to push you over the edge. The other thing is you need to have some level of professionalism. Present yourself well. No matter how flashy your, you know, your tapping riffs are, or how fast you can play or anything else, people want to play with people that don't make them miserable. We've all heard the old thing about nepotism, about, you know, well, you know, this company only hires their friends, or they only do this. Well, there's a reason why that happens so much. It's because people want a predictable outcome, and they want to be around people that they like. And I've known really, really good players who just didn't have social skills, and it cost them gigs. I think two perfect examples of this would be like Ingve Malmsteen. You look at every band he had before he was a solo artist, and they talked about him being a problem to work with. When he joined Alcatraz, he had problems. You know, the uh, project he did with Steeler, they didn't like his attitude. It, if he hadn't gone on to be a solo artist, his career would have been over. He had to, no matter how good he was, he was a problematic person. So, you know, that goes to show that a phenomenal talent like his at that time, when what he does was just unheard of, was still getting marginalized. And, you know, having people just look at kicking him out of the band, which is apparently what even Steeler was looking at doing, and auditioning people right in front of him because he was just such a problem. So, 
it, you won't get the gig if you come in and you're not communicative, you're not able to gel with people, you don't have any kind of sense of social skill. Unfortunately, it's something you have to work at. I've heard it from absolute top level players that they would that you have to live with somebody on the road and at rehearsals. They would always rather be with somebody that they like and they get along with than a player that was better than them because the misery isn't worth it. And I've dealt with it personally. I've been in bands with people that had incredible chops and ability and their incompetence and their difficulty of getting along with and, you know, just whether it came down to them just not functioning or them being really combative or something, it made it horrific. And I would have traded the sloppiest player on earth to play with in a minute for this highly skilled person because I did not want to be on a stage or in a rehearsal room with them. It, I literally would get stomach aches thinking about having to deal with them again. So that's a crucial part that you have to have both. You've got to have your skills on point and you've got to be the person who's on point. You have to be able to be worked with and you have to be a great player. Can't have one and the without the other. It's a whole package. If you have those, you will never be without a gig. Basis are needed to begin with, and we tend to command a higher premium because, you know, let's face it, as a guitar player every 10 feet, not so much with bassists. We can command a bit more, but if you're great to work with, you're a competent artist, and you're a killer, the, the gigs will be thrown at you, you know, faster than you can keep up with them. I guarantee you. Now, the last piece is, again, learn the stuff, learn more than what's asked, show up on time, and be professional. If you treated, well, you know, I'm not going to make too much of a prediction, but if you treated it like a job interview you really wanted, which I've seen a couple of those where, you know, dude, you showed up in your pajamas, what? But if you treated it with that level of respect, that level of I'm trying to impress and I want this genuinely, and you didn't show up with all your friends, you didn't show up with your partner, you didn't show up with gear that was falling apart, you didn't show up with you know, your instrument that you know, couldn't be tuned or there's some kind of problem with it or you're 25 minutes late or, you know, that type of garbage. You wouldn't do that for a high-level job interview. Don't do it to this one. You know, it, regardless of whether you're getting paid or not, treat everything like it matters and do it to the highest level of your ability. It's better for your prospects and it's better for your own self-esteem. When you start carrying yourself with that level of expectation for yourself, you start getting this crazy thing called pride. And it does good things for you. So that's how you want to handle an audition. That's what you should expect from yourself. And you should want the band to expect that from you. Because if they expect that from you, it means they hold those standards. Those are the players you want to choose to be with. If they're like, oh, okay, whatever, man, just, you know, show up whenever, hey, can you bring some brews or can you do, cut, dump those guys like a sack of wet har armpit hair. It's just going to be a waste of your time. And, you know, if you're going to go out and you're going to do this and you want to look good, you have to rise to the level of the company you want to keep. Be with the best, be one of the best and prove it in that audition. I guarantee just following these basic tips you will start nailing auditions and you also start weeding out the bands that aren't worth your time. And that's crucial to notice too. If you go into an audition and they're not meeting the standard you put up, no matter how cool the music is, walk. I'm telling you, I've made the mistake. I hear really good music coming out of a bunch of people, but they're so unprofessional, they just wind up dragging you down and it goes nowhere. The best music in the world that can't make it out of a rehearsal space is not make, worth your time. Never. Write the, good, write the good stuff yourself and just move on. So that's how to nail an audition. That's how to do it. Now let's talk about how to learn those songs before you get there. One big mistake I see whether a person's learning a song for an audition or just for themselves is they forget one big crucial step, listening. Again, something else that seems obvious and simple 
but apparently it's not. Uh, when you go to listen to a song, you need to really focus on it and let it become internalized before you try and learn it. Because if you don't understand the timing of it, if you can't hear it correctly in your head before you sit down to try and figure out the notes, then you need to spend more time listening. You know, how many times have you listened to a song growing up? And if I said, tell me all the lyrics to it, you've never sat and actually tried to learn the lyrics, but you somehow just know them. You can sing the melody. You can mouth the guitar riff. It's because you've done passive listening and it's become part of you. If you went to play that, you would just be putting your fingers on the places that make those sounds that you already know. And you know the rhythm and the exact timing. That stuff is crucial. So internalize a song before you go to learn it. Usually before I learn songs, I'll spend two, three days just having them on constant rotation and listening to them. I'm telling you, your ability to figure out songs and to nail them and have your practice of them go smoother will increase exponentially if you listen to them until they're you know, really locked in your subconscious and you can hum along with them first because you've done 50% of the work. Now, the other thing is, is as you sit down to learn them, don't try and learn a whole song at once. It, it becomes overwhelming and it's too much information to try and grab at once. And I see that problem too, is you have to sm start in chunks and master that piece first. Almost act like the song only exists in 30 second chunks. Get the intro, nail it, get it down, done. And not just, oh, I can play this when the song's going on or something. If you want to find out how much you really know something, turn on a metronome at the, the same tempo of the song and play the part rhythmically perfectly. Then you know it and up to speed. Slow it down, learn it correctly, then move on. Do it in, you know, learn the intro, learn the first verse, learn the chorus learn the B section, you know, all that one chunk at a time and only focus on that part until you have it down. Then play it with the two parts together. You know, if you learn the intro, then you learn the first verse, got those, okay, now play intro and first verse together. Take it in pieces like that. One other great tip on this is as you figure it out, and I've mentioned this in other places, Listen to the song and imagine yourself playing it. That practice time counts. You're, you actually can't tell the difference, and they've proven this, that learning, uh, learning a song and imagining yourself playing it is every bit as effective in memorizing it as actually playing it. Your brain can't tell the difference between those two types of practice. So the memorization can happen even away from your instrument. So that can help a lot, especially if you have to travel or you're trying to learn songs like on a flight or while traveling to a show or a gig, that can pay off big time. But do the song in sections, perfect it. Don't move on to anything until you have that part down and it's perfect. And then you can play all of it together with continuity. So, you know, verse, then verse chorus, then verse and chorus together with the B section that, you know, just keep stepping it along. It'll make a big difference and you'll be able to take large amounts of information and move through them sequentially and you can almost predictively count how much time it's going to take you to learn it and then you don't get stuck going to an audition unprepared. If you have three songs to learn, you better be learning five and go, okay, I have two weeks to do this. How much time am I going to practice every day? How many pieces are there to each song? Say I need two rehearsals per song, going through them in 15 minute chunks. So I'm gonna say that's two days per song. I'm gonna have uh, you know that over the two week period, finalize and nail out things on this weekend. You have a measurable way to account to be sure you're ready on time. And you also have you know destination goals for each thing that are achievable doable, and your confidence in yourself will rise up a lot because you'll be able to go, hey, I set a goal, I achieved it, and every day I worked out, and when I got to the end, it was exactly the ending I predicted. I'm competent, I got it down, and now I can actually perform the song 
And if I'm using it for an audition, I can perform it well because I've been working on it steadily and progressively with confidence and I can perform with the band. I can be into the music. I can work and interact with the artists instead of standing there staring at my instrument in terror, hoping I can remember something that I barely put together. It makes a huge difference. And that goes back into section one where we talked about being interactive and being able to work with people. When they see that not only did you learn a song, but you learned it so well that it's now something you're having fun with and you're enjoying just performing it instead of desperately trying to get through it, you're going to blow people away. Expect that of yourself. And again, it's a great thing to just take things in chunks and see yourself go, I'm going to knock this out today. I've scheduled the time to do it. And when you see it happen, you start going, I got the machine moving. I know how to do this. This is something achievable. And I know that my process pays off. I know by this date, done deal. I've got this nailed down. So as artists, we can tend to be a bit ethereal and we have things going on and you know we tend to be open-ended in the way we approach things. We can learn something a little bit from our business friends and our more you know strict brain guys. A little bit of discipline and especially scheduling and framework will pay off huge. And if you can have a foot in both worlds, you can have a lot of success as an artist where a lot of people won't because you know how to achieve goals in your art instead of your art just being something nebulous that just arrives at random times. Especially if you're going to go into music professionally, you have to do this because they call it the music business for a reason. You play in music, but you have to handle your business. So, I hope all this pays off. I hope that it's a reminder, maybe, of some things that we know we should be doing and we don't always get to. And I have no doubt if you follow these rules and if you start learning songs in the way that I described to you, not only are you going to start feeling more effective, have more pride, and have a better sense of how you can get things done, but you're going to crush it and you're going to get a lot more gigs. Thanks so much for watching. Comments down below. Tell me your great gig stories. Tell me your bad gig stories. We all got them. I'll share some of my own in there, too, and on the Discord server coming up this week. My best to all of you. Hope you do great on the audition, and I will see you on the next one. Wait! Don't go! You never know. Moments like this are crucial. The next video you watch could change your life. And it might be this one, or even this one. Are you willing to take that chance? Well, check him out.